Wow, so much noise here. <laughs> Good morning from NAM Show 2020. Of course, we start at Dingwall. Uh, not a question for us. Sheldon Dingwall, Happy New Year. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Yeah. So, um, so good to see you. Yeah, so good to see you too. Almost fun already. Yeah. Um, we love your instruments. Our customers love your instruments. We're always sold out. Um, yeah. Um, what you got for us? Um, you just a minute ago, you were talking about new colors on the NG. Yeah, um, and first I'd love to say that um, we're big fans of, of uh, the, our German customers. We've met a lot of them, and, and uh, just every single one has just been so great to deal with. You've been great to deal with. I love, thank you. I love all your creative ideas in your store, well, thank you. and uh, really happy to be partnered with you. And, and uh, can't wait to get back to the Mannheim show. And yeah, and, uh, yeah. Okay. cool. So shall we start with the NGs? Um, it's our, our, so to speak, most popular model So for the customers. So, NG over there. Yeah, so um, with the NG, we, we change the colors every year. Um, yes. Black and white will continue. Uh, the blue and purple will uh, be discontinued. So if you like blue and purple, now's your chance. Don't wait because they're not going to last forever. Um, they've been replaced with matte gold. Okay, beautiful. And the matte gold has been super popular. I can't believe how popular it's been. Yeah. And we have another color that we're introducing in the early spring. It's a black forest. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really deep, dark green, really rich looking. Uh, it's classy and flashy at the same time. Okay. So, um, yeah, then next in line, uh, the D Rocks. It's the evolution of the D Bird. Yeah. So the upgrade. Um, as you can see, the standards. Yeah, tell us something about it, if you like. So the, the D-Rock evolved from the, the D-Bird, as you mentioned. Um, a couple of things we changed on it, and that was due to, to uh, reason, well, mainly due to uh, customer preferences, but there were some outside uh, preferences from another company that, that yeah. they made the Maybe. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we increased the upper fret axis, yeah. which uh, a lot of our customers uh, really appreciate. Um, and then we put this cut in the back here, and, and that lightens up the body. And, it, and it, I don't fully understand yeah. why, but it makes it resonate better. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It, yeah. It, it's been very positive. Uh, we've had customers have both bases, yeah. and they prefer the sound of the, of the D-Rock. Yeah. I, like uh, I like it in an optical way. It always looks a little bit like a shark fin or something like yeah. that. And yeah. if you notice on all our bases, yeah. all yeah. our bases, except for the uh, fender style ones, all and, have that cut. And I like because that the um, that the input is here, so the cable comes out quite parallel, and you can just do it behind your strap. That's what I like. Yeah. So, so perfect, perfect uh, yeah, solution, and it looks really cool, I think. Thank you. Congratulations, yeah. Um, so we've had the four string uh, in the two versions for, for quite some time now. Um, and this year we finally brought out the five string standard, taking pre-orders on this. Um, and it's been really, really well received. New bridge. Okay. Uh, we developed the new bridge in, in, in tandem with the, uh, the D-Rock. And um, it's a very, very simple but very robust very solid bridge, and and it also has allowed the uh, the tone of the instrument to um, to just get even more solid, and powerful. Great. So, um, could you maybe on this bass guitar tell us a little bit about the scale? So, which scales are you, yeah, building? We use, we're using our standard long scale, uh, yeah. which is a 34 inch G. 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 Yeah. And it progresses to a 37-inch B. Okay. Now the interesting thing about the D-Rock is we had to solve the balance problem. Okay. And and so if you put your strap ins here and here, it, it will be head heavy. Yes. So by moving the strap ins inward, it moves the whole base to the right. And now interesting. It, it balances on a strap, but it also balances your shoulders. And so when you're playing. Now your shoulders are equally spread. It's not like this. It's like this, and it's much more comfortable. Wow! Even though it's a 37-inch scale, yeah, uh, it doesn't matter how big or small your hands are. Oh, okay, so when your hand is closer, 
Yes. Everything. Much more comfortable. You're more centered? Yes. Okay. And then, wow. And that's how multi-scale playing is not a problem, Sheldon says. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we have customers We have customers that are this tall that play these oh, Of course. Yeah. And this. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. And you know, the, uh, you can get a, a, a nice sounding B string with a 35 inch scale, but you will feel like a king with a 37. Yeah. You will you will command the entire stage. Yeah, yeah it's amazing feeling. That's what we are uh, telling our customers as well. Don't be afraid to try such kind of long bass with 37. Just try it, even if you are not that tall and don't do not have that large hands. It's always yeah because of your great neck action. Um, I'm sorry, so it's very easy to play, in my opinion, and yeah. in general, the fan frets are more easy to play than, yeah, man, why think of it, which, if you, if you haven't tried yet. Right. Exactly. Um, a lot of players try it, and they don't even notice the fan frets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, admittedly, in the upper frets, you're going to have to find uh, yeah. different... That's more sets. difficult, yeah. But it opens things up for greater stretches. Yeah, yeah so, exactly, yeah. It's an adventure. Yeah. It is an adventure, and it's an exciting adventure. Um, and and uh, that's what music is about, you know. When I was a kid, um, guitars were exciting to look at, and it was exciting to go to concerts to see all these different guitars. And so that's really why we why we do colors like this and shapes yeah. like this is we want the audience member. To, to go to go home and say you should have seen this bass this guy was playing man it was so cool looking yeah and it just rumbled my seat it was sounded amazing and looked yeah. amazing yeah it's always about that kind of rock and roll thing it's always the the idea of having fun is always important I think too yeah. right yeah. 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 yeah 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 okay so then we got the D bird uh, the D rock customs and yeah the Hellboy model yeah. Customs uh, are made in our shop in Canada. Um, they're they're a little more refined in shape. They have uh, uh, some angles here to just make them uh, uh, a little sexier looking. Um, they come standard with a uh, with a wooden pick guard, and the whole idea was the original the model that this was based off of was designed by a car designer, and so. We wanted to update it, and what if it was designed by the guy from Lamborghini? And so it has very smooth, rounded shapes, muscular looking. Yeah. Wow. Um, Beautiful back. And the pick guard matches the headstock plate. Yeah. In this case, it also matches the fingerboard, but it doesn't have to. You could you could substitute any fingerboard you wanted. Okay. Um, so which fingerboards are you basically offering here, or which you would you recommend? So of course. I think um, rosewood is kind of cool. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah, that gives you a nice traditional tone. Yeah. We're big fans of Wenge. Okay. Uh, Wenge has a very balanced tone, and uh, the body is Kaya, which which gives you a, a strong mid range. And if you pair that with a Wenge neck, the Wenge neck fills in the top and bottom, and it just gives you this big even tone, and it's really easy to mix. Um, We've done as much as possible to pre-engineer the tone, yeah. so that now when you when you go to plug in and, and either record or play live, you don't have to correct the bass. You just adjust for the room or you adjust for the mix, and it, and it really makes mixing so much easier. Okay. Yeah. So as we saw, all the D rocks here are passive, also available um, in active, but as you with your experience over decades of playing and building. So, as you just said, the passive is more attractive on that model, or? Yeah, it, it, I mean, we've spent, as I mentioned before, we spent a lot of time engineering the, the tone, so that you don't actually need a preamp. Yeah. Because, um, you know, if you've, if you've got a pedal board, you've got preamps in your pedal board, you've got a yeah. preamp in your amp, how many preamps do you need yeah, yeah, in your yeah. signal chain? Yeah. It just no wanted to noise, point at, yeah. Noise, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, so you can get a great tone just with the passive setup, but if you want tone 2.0, yeah. then we have the Rob Vanderlo model. Yeah, perfect. So mm -hmm. in addition to the master volume and rotary pickup selector, mm -hmm. we have uh, a parallel drive circuit with a tone on the drive circuit. Okay. And so what this does is 
it allows the bass to fit into the mix perfectly. You just add a little bit of drive and, and it's unbelievable. Uh, I've seen Rob do demos of it where he plays uh, clean and then he just adds a touch of dirt. And it's like a bass playing with backing tracks and then a bass fitting in the backing tracks. Oh wow, So that sounds for, interesting. For anybody who's doing any recording, this is an amazing system. It's very intuitive, two knobs, that's all it is. And uh, you can get great tones no matter how it's set up. Okay, great. Um, yeah, other side of the booth. So what, what, what we got here? Always been very uh, influenced by car design. Yeah. And so this was influenced by a high-end Bentley I saw on TV. Okay. Um, I've never seen one live. <laughs> okay. Uh, Southern California. If you go down to Newport Beach, they're all over the place. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, to me, the sexiest Bentley is one in Ferrari yeah. red. I mean, that's that's just saying, you know. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. So we we uh, so we're mixing the finish of the car with a beautiful dashboard, and then the inlays. Uh, represent like the trim around uh, let's say the speedometer and things like that and um, so performance wise um, you have traditional and hot for each pickup and then you can combine the pickups in four different variations of, of single oil or uh, parallel or series okay. so essentially it gives you almost every traditional bass tone at your fingertips so Let's say uh, you've got it set up like a J-Bass, but you need more of a Stingray tone. Yeah. Well, instead of setting down your J and picking up your Stingray and then having to tune it and, and losing the moment, you flick a switch and you're in a completely different sound spectrum. Wow. Great. So it's really great for recording. And really great for somebody who has to cover a lot of different sonic territory. Great. Uh, so, we've got at least class. And the Lee Sklar two bass with three pickups. And this is actually Lee's personal bass. He signed it. And we're going to be, uh, we're not going to auction it, but we're going to be selling it and donating the proceeds to one of his charities. Ah, and it's, it's good uh, idea, yeah. It's, wow. Uh, canine companions for service people. So, in other words, it's um, uh, for people who've been in the military or, or uh, police service or uh, fire service um, who need a. Um, uh, a, a dog, to, you know, to uh, assist them with with uh, with their life. Yeah. Whether it's because of an eye injury or whether it's just because of uh, uh, trauma that they've suffered, um, this charity helps provide match dogs with with these service people in need. Okay. So uh, just a really great, really great thing. And Lee's a great guy. He's got a big heart, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just super happy to be able to help him out with that. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. That's always it. Sheldon. That's yeah. We have some uh, new and cool finishes over here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If we've got time, let's see it. Yeah. Again, the, uh, the Afterburner 2 semi hollow. Um, yeah. And it's a semi hollow that has equal tone on all the strings, which is, which is uh, very difficult to, to provide. But it just gives you this open and this airiness to the note. It's a really fun bass to just sit and play unplugged. Just sitting on the couch, just playing quietly to you by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can you just can almost hear it now. And and feel the body when you play that. You can feel the body resonating. Wow! Wow! That's cool. It's just a really yeah. wonderful experience. Yeah. Just to feel yeah. This whole yeah. Um, these are the new ghost inlays for the speedo bars. Um, subtler looking than than. Um, traditional inlay um, and just a new look so what what top wood is it uh, this is a the um, uh, Buckeye Buckeye and yeah it's, yeah it's a bleached Buckeye um, Buckeye is a really interesting wood oftentimes they have to to uh, stick dynamite underneath the tree to blow it out of the um, out of the ground because okay most of this happens below the surface of the, of ah, the okay didn't know that yeah interesting yeah. And on, on pretty steep hillsides, so it's they're very hard trees to get to. They're very hard trees to harvest, and which is why Buckeye is so expensive and rare. How, how do you call this color finish? This is a, um, a Caribbean burst. 
Aero Camera Lenses. bean burst. Yeah, okay. and, and it's a reverse burst, which gives you the look of the sand on the outside and, yeah. the, and the Caribbean waters on the inside. Okay, which uh, preamp is installed here? Uh, this is a German Glockenklang. Glockenklang, yeah. Wonderful preamps. Yeah. Um, which has the uh, the hybrid tone control, which which is half passive, half active. So even when you're in passive mode, you still have your ability to turn your tone down. Okay. Uh, it's a yeah. Very very cool system. Great. Yeah. Um, so we have the ABZ. Yeah. Which oh swamp ash. Swamp ash and then satin yeah a satin finish. Uh, yeah. And, and we chose Matrix colors for this because we're big fans of the of the movie The Matrix. Oh okay. Uh, Inspired by Matrix the movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the next step up in our line is the Afterburner 1. And so this base started in in 2000. And this, this was our entry level base in 2000. Um, this is done with a... Changing color? Yeah. Color shift finish inspired by the Canadian Arctic. Ah, okay. So when you're in, when you're in Canada, in, in, um, up north, and you look up into the sky, you see the Aurora Borealis. And it has these shifting golds and greens and blues. And wow, it sounds beautiful. And the further up north you are, the more it looks like they're falling down on you. It looks like you could almost reach up and touch them. Wow. It's very cool. Wow. And that's about it. What? Yeah, that's way it. Sheldon, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, that's been it. Um, thank you. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, great.